But the great thing is we've got a better airplane for that because what we've done is we've taken the door from being just kind of standard industry size now to the biggest door in the industry. So it's now 170 inches wide and 124 inches high. And that means we can accommodate things like uh, big jet engines that you get on a 787 or an AC-30neo in one piece. So we can put them in in one go. And if we start to look at the engines in this airplane, they can be easily split down to fan and the core, and then we can get them in. So what we've got is We've eased the carriage of these engines and it's quite a large business, uh, quite a large business niche inside the freighter market. And that means with that door, we can also start to look at how we can get bigger package sizes on the aircraft. And we can even do things like 20 foot shipping containers onto the aircraft now, which you'd never do, or very rarely. But what it means is we have a lot more flexibility built in. In addition to that, we've also added uh, two tons to the payload. We started at 109 tons, we're now up at 111 tons. So yeah, there is a little delay, but we have a better plane. And that's the kind of thing that our customers want and they appreciate that. We are here at the IATA World Cargo Symposium in Hong Kong. And uh, from here, we bring a series of conversation with uh, global leaders from the aviation and air cargo industries. And with me in conversation today is uh, Crawford Hamilton. Crawford is the head of freighter marketing at Airbus. Crawford, great to have you for this conversation. Great to be here, very big pleasure. Crawford, let's talk about the A350 um, freighter, Airbus A350 freighter, which is likely to be uh, in the market 2026. Uh, bring us up to speed with what is going on with the production of uh, this particular uh, freighter. Well, we've entered an exciting phase at the moment because we are actually starting to produce things for the aircraft. So we're starting to produce the components. The components will then go into sub-assemblies and then they'll go into the sections, as we call them. And they're the bits that come to Toulouse that then get go into final assembly. So with this year, it will be very much building these components into the sub-assemblies and into the sections. And then next year, Round about this time, we'll start final assembly of the first aircraft, and then that'll be ready for a first flight by the end of the year. So when you launched in 2021, it was said that it would be available by the end of 2025. Are the timelines within what you had announced in 2021? Well, we're, as Mr. Forey announced last year, we've now moved into 2026. But the great thing is we've got a better airplane for that because what we've done is we've taken the door from being just kind of standard industry size now to the biggest door in the industry. So it's now 170 inches wide and 124 inches high. And that means we can accommodate things like uh, big jet engines that you get on a 787 or an AC-30neo in one piece. So we can put them in in one go. And if we start to look at the engines in this airplane, they can be easily split down to fan and the core and then we can get them in. So what we've got is We've eased the carriage of these engines and it's quite a large business, uh, quite a large business niche inside the freighter market. And that means with that door, we can also start to look at how we can get bigger package sizes on the aircraft. And we can even do things like 20 foot shipping containers onto the aircraft now, which you'd never do, or very rarely. But what it means is we have a lot more flexibility built in. In addition to that, we've also added uh, two tons to the payload. We started at 109 tons, we're now up at 111 tons. So yeah, there is a little delay, but we have a better plane. And that's the kind of thing that our customers want and they appreciate that. Delays are helping you in terms of refining the product quality? Uh, the product quality will always be high because remember one of our big things within Airbus is that our focus is on safety. You look at our motto, it's about a safe and secure world. And that's very much top of it. But what this is about is actually the engineering challenges that these things uh, present because when you make the door when you cut a hole in an aircraft it's always a challenge uh, but what it is is making sure that we can cover all the bases there to make sure that by the time we get to EIS by having a mature platform in the 350 we also have a mature freighter aircraft entering into service for everything that makes it a freighter which is principally the door and also the floor. Other specifications changed from what was announced in 2021? You mentioned about, of course, the door. Are there any other specification changed? Principally, the maximum structural payload goes up by two tons. So what that means for an airline is they can get more revenue. For aerospace, supply chain has been under tremendous stress in the last yeah. few years, COVID, and then subsequently, because you depend on a number of vendors outside uh, 
How challenging is that going to be for this particular one? It's always challenging and it's something that we uh, monitor on an ongoing basis. So yes, it's always a challenge, but also that's why we have people in Airbus plan these things. And what we do is we plan it and we make sure that there are going to be no problems. Give us a sense of your current order size. I believe it is about 50 orders from different customers. Well, we've done quite well. Bear in mind, in 2021, we had no orders for this aircraft. We had no presence in the large freighter sector at all. So we've got now to 50 orders. We've got enough fit of one that will, was announced at Singapore uh, that will come in. That'll take us up to 55, which that means we're now got the same number of orders as a competitor. So we're very happy about that. But we also have double the number of customers. So we're very happy. And particularly, you know, at the moment in the region, we've got Singapore Airlines, we've got Cathay Pacific, and we've also got Starlux now as well. So we feel we're off to a good start. But it is only the beginning, so uh, let's be humble about it, <laughs> even though I'm very proud. Crawford, uh, do you have regular interaction with your customers? I believe today aircraft design, freighter designs are also based on the regular customer interaction. They have very some specific requirements. How intense is your interaction with your customers in terms of building this new aircraft from scratch right now? Well, we started speaking to customers about this aircraft around about 2015. And then we get into more detailed discussions about two years later. We kept them going. We even kept them going during COVID, even though we couldn't actually meet. We did it remotely. And over that period, we got about 80 suggestions from customers. Of them, we've taken about over 70 of them. So really, it's been very much a customer-driven design. So we've introduced features uh, like fresh air up in this area, in the courier area and crew area, because we discovered that normally when you've got animals on board, it can get a bit smelly up there. And therefore to get a 21st century working environment, you give the pilots and crew and the couriers, you give them fresh air there, which is something that isn't available on other aeroplanes, but something that we believe is what a 21st century workplace should be. I know this probably may not matter have an answer, but I just have to ask you, what is the potential demand for an aircraft like this, which is a serious competition because they were dominating the market for a very long time? What we look at, we have a thing called the global market forecast, the Airbus issues uh, every year. And of that, for large freighters, we see a demand over the next 20 years of around about 600 aircraft, of which about 500 of them will be new build freighters. So for us, bearing in mind that the 777F will cease manufacture at the end of 2027, the real competition is the 777F from Boeing. But Boeing has dominated the market for a very long time. One of the things we have in our favor here is part of the things that came to make us create this aircraft was customers coming to us saying, we'd like some competition in the market. We've then, as I said, got this, the new ICAO rules in terms of sustainability that limit CO2 emissions from aeroplanes. Uh, that's going to mean that all current line built freighters all will stop manufacture. So they had to do a new one as well. We then get into the fact that we also have a great platform in the A350. And then of course you're looking for a market and that market is old 747s that are getting to an age now where they need retired. We burn 40% less fuel than a 747. So that can really be transformative instead of in terms of an operation. And also it's more sustainable from a environmental point of view. So you put all that together, we think we've picked the right time to launch. And now we've just got to let the competition play out. But we will try very much our hardest to get as much of that market as we can. Okay, with the A350 freighter already in the production stage, do you foresee your a330-200 freighter eventually being phased out? I think for the 330-200, it was born over the period of the great financial crisis. And we sold about 78, we delivered about 38. It's doing a really good job. And we know that, for instance, it's operated out of Hong Kong by DHL. And from what I've heard, speaking to some people, they absolutely love it. But for that period of post start of globalization, it wasn't the right size. Big freighters were the way to go. So I think it's probably reaching the end in terms of uh, us offering it. But I think the, it very much, the market moved more than it did over that period. And that was what we had there. Happily though, it's in operation everywhere and doing really well.
I'd like to end the conversation asking you your comment on the converted freighters and you have some of the, the best converted yeah. freighters under the Airbus program A320 and A321 and A330. What is the future for converted freighters? Is that going to be in huge demand in the coming years? I think we do see big demands, particularly if you look at single aisle freighters or small freighters, 320, 321. There's a huge demand there of something over a thousand aircraft in that period, and they'll probably all be converted. You start to look at the midsize, there's still some 767 line built to reproduce. But again, the 330s come into that market. We're getting a lot of traction with customers now. We have getting on for 30 aircraft service there. So they're doing well, and they're very much a complement to new build freighters. They do complement each other, and it means that we've got that small, medium, and large freighter in our family that means we can offer whatever our company looks for. So there will be people who will operate, maybe the integrators like UPS and FedEx and uh, SF and uh, DHL. They operate small, medium and large freighters. We now have a small, medium and large freighter. So we're really into that market now. Uh, they're undoubtedly competition for us. There's also large freighter conversions as well. They're not yet certificated, but they complement what the new freighters do. So it's a market that we share. Looking forward to the A350 freighter flying around uh, Crawford. Really a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks very much. It's been a pleasure and it's good to see you here. Thank you.